Hello, hello, hello. This is your Captain Panic speaking and welcome back to another typography adventure in Touch Designer. Um, please have a seat and enjoy your flight. So, um, in this adventure we will have a look at this kind of sliced typography. Um, you might notice this is kind of the effect of a really old school font, I think, at least the, this is the kind of effect that this font has. I don't really know the name of it, but it's sliced into pieces and I managed to create something like this and we can choose between different kind of effects, like we have this really kind of analog feeling grainy thing and if we want more movement to it, we could get in some some pixel look or just some organic ups and downs. And yeah, in this tutorial I will show you how to do all of these. And we will have a look at those on how to create it. It's kind of simple. It works with UV remapping. I already have a tutorial about some kind of grid displacement. Um, which goes more into deep detail, uh, but this time we will just have a look at it. So, um, I will get rid of this file, and I have my default startup file already in the background. And now let's get started. So, the first thing we will need is, of course, a text to displays. So bring in the text and connect it to a null and I have a useful shortcut here. So if you hit Alt, you select your your top and then you hit Alt and N and then it automatically creates in a null without having to go into the operator menu. So this is kind of great. And then I hit the blue button so we see what's going on in the background. And now you can see we need to export our resolution. So I'm working with my startup file. So I just copy this and paste it on here. But you could also type your resolution in here. And now you can see the higher our resolution gets, the smaller our text gets. <laughs> so we need to make this a little bit bigger again. And since I'm lazy, I'm working with this auto fit always in the font tab of our text, which makes it auto fit the size of our resolution. And I don't like Verdana, so I change it to Arial and then under text, I will change my text to panic, of course. <laughs> and also, I will copy this and only do it with a P. Um, since it's sometimes it's pretty cool to have some effects only on one um, letter and I'm adding a switch after it so I can switch between those two really fast without having to plug in anything else. So um, now this will be the thing we will displace <laughs> and we will displace it by re by remapping the UV coordinates of this thing. So I will bring in a remap in here. Where is it? There it is. And I will change the extend mode from zero to repeat. Um, you will know why later on. <laughs> and now let's take care of our UV map. So um, first of all, we were will need a ramp. I'm copying my ramp from my default file and we will change the pixel format to 32-bit mono with, without an alpha channel, so just the mono. And yeah, that's it. And then we will connect this one to a reorder. Not to be confused with the remap, so we just need the reorder. And then 
another thing out of our ramp, but first we will go into a flip and we will change the flop to bottom left. So we just rotate it and 90 degrees against the, the clock. And then we will block this into the second input of this reorder. So you can see we have um, four inputs and that's for the different color channels. So we bring this into the second input and then in, in here we change the output green to our second input. And then we change the pixel format of this reorder to 32-bit float RGBA and now I did something wrong <laughs> and what did I do wrong? Ah uh, yeah, we don't want any blue in here so that's the reason we get this pink or magenta down here so we need to change the output from blue or off the blue <laughs> to zero so no, no blue involved in this reorder and now you can see we have a UV map. So those of you who are familiar with 3D stuff might notice this thing and that's... I can't really explain why it looks like this, but it just defines the distribution of textures on different things. So it's, it can be 2D, but it can also be 3D. So if we plug this into the second input of our remap, nothing happens since this is a basic UV map and this already has a basic UV map so basically that's the same thing this already has so nothing changes in here but now we will bring in some some changes and the first thing I will do is add a null here and then um, Get ourselves some space and a null here so we can work in between and then I will bring in a displace in here so we will displace this UV map and this time we will use a ramp to displace it so I'm copying my ramp bring it in and I'm changing the pixel format of this ramp to 32-bit float, so we want it to be as accurate as possible. And then I'm plugging it into the second input of our displays. Now you can already see, we get some, some effect. Um, we we kind of stretch it. <laughs> and now we want to animate it. So I chose to animate the face of our ramp by using apps time dot seconds, so apps time dot seconds, and so it's nice and smooth. I multiplied it with null point one, and then when we hit play, you can already see some stuff going on. So we have this stretched typography, and we're moving it from A to B, just like the face does. And now we can get some some different effects. So. For example, if you want to get rid of this stretching thing and you want to have it kind of like, like this, but only sliced, so like I showed in the beginning, we will go down with the period, so we have more slices. So right now we only have the one slice, which is pretty far away from each other. So we go down with the period to... Um, yeah, something we enjoyed. I think 9.3 is kind of nice. And right now we are displacing really heavily and we don't want that. So we go down with our displace weight to maybe null point null two or let's go down to null point null three. And now you can see we kind of have a slicing effect, but we 
that's not what what I showed in the beginning, and that's because my period is too big right now. So I'm bringing down the period to 9.1. Maybe this is nice in terms of slicing. And then another thing I will do is, since I don't want this kind of slanted effect, I don't want it to stretch into both ways. So I'm going down with the displace weight on one parameter. So it can be the X and the Y because the 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 ramp can define which direction we want to slice. So if you change your ramp type to vertical, you get those vertical slices. And if you go back to horizontal, we get those slices. And basically that's exactly what we want. So you could go down with the period even more if you want more slices. But I feel like this is kind of kind of good to go. And you could also change the um, ramp type to radial or circular if you want to. <laughs> um, it can be kind of cool. Um, can be kind of ugly too. <laughs> but um, there's some potential. I think I, I really like this effect, for example. So let's change this to horizontal again. And let's have a look at how we can get this analog and grainy feeling I showed in the beginning into this composition. So um, let's go down here, up here again. So basically what I did to bring in the grain, I brought in a noise, so I'm copying my noise from my default file. And then I'm using this ramp for the first input. And then if we would use this, we would get the ramp combined with the noise since the output of the noise is the input. So this ramp plus the noise. So it's both copied into each other, like combined with a blending mode. And if, if we change some stuff in this noise, we get different effects. So for example, if we go higher with the period, we get this more irregular slicing. And if we go down, we get this grainy thing since the period is so low, the noise is only a grain. <laughs> so now we have this kind of nice and grainy effect going on here. So you could change the look of it by changing the output of the noise. So if, for example, if you change it to input multiplied with the noise, it's a little bit different and more irregular. And if you change it to input minus the noise, it's kind of a difference effect. So this is like the add and this is like the difference or something like this. <laughs> Um, I, I kind of enjoy this this one the most, um, but this is up to you once again. So if you change the noise type in here again, totally different effect. Change it here. This is really nice, I enjoy this a lot. And of course you can always change the extent mode of the noise to mirror or something, so it's even more displaced and irregular. So or a more organic kind of way. Um, yeah, um, do whatever you like. So if you change the um, ramp type to vertical again, the stripes will happen vertical. And if you change it to horizontal, you have it like them, like this. And yeah, this is the first episode of this adventure. So now I will show you how to get some more movement into into this apart from the slicing. So um, let's move those over here. And then let's bring in a switch here in front of this display since we will do some different effects. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I had to take a <laughs> short break. Um, since I got a little bit confused on how to how to set it up right, <laughs> and 
now I know how to do this. So um, we will bring in a noise. So I'm just copying my noise here. And then we change the pixel format to 32 bit float. And we will use this null as a first input for the noise. So we just have the colors combined with that noise. And then I uh, will bring in, oops, um, I will bring in a composite after this. And we'll bring this null in back into this composite and just leave it on multiply in here. And then I will connect this to our switch. And then we are all already in our second input. And now you can see it's a little bit too heavy distorted. So to reduce this, we set up the period to two, bring down the harmonics. And another thing we will do is we will animate that noise. Of course, using apps time dot seconds. And now we get this kind of irregular, uh, more movement to this animation. And if you don't want it to be this heavily distorted or this hard, you could um, bring up the period or, um, I don't know, play, just, just play around <laughs> with those. Um, those numbers and until you like it. I don't have a have glue what you like so I won't tell you some numbers. So you could bring down or bring up the scale which gives you different effects if you change the scale of the noise. But I will leave it on, on one for now. And also I will bring down the period to something like five maybe. I kinda really like this. And I also like that we get some more typography happening up here. I think if you don't want that you could change yeah. You could change the remap mode to extend mode to zero. So if you have another extend mode here you will get some kind of repetition on the edges. So I will change it to zero now. Um so it's a little bit more clear. And yeah, this was the first kind of displacement I wanted to show. And then I have another one in the pipeline. So let's deactivate this for now. And let's also let's go back to our basic setup. And now let's bring in another thing. So the first thing we will bring in is a constant. And change the channel name to grid. And then type something like, I don't know, 45. And now let's bring in a noise. So I'm not using my noise from my default startup file now because I want to change the resolution. So I'm just bringing in a noise, change the output pixel format to 32 bit float, and I will export this constant chop onto our resolution. So we want this to have a resolution of 45 by 45, which will define the amount of pixels we will have. So um, another thing, since we want this to be pixelated, we change the viewer smoothness to nearest pixel. So now you can already see we have some pixels going on. And now we want those pixels to move around. So type apps time seconds and maybe multiply it with 0.1 so it's more smooth and then so our displacement is not too heavy we go down with the period a little bit and I changed it to no harmonics I changed the amplitude to something like 0.025 and the offset to let's work with null for now. Then I will connect this one 
to a fit since we need to bring it back into our resolution. So I'm copying my resolution here, paste it onto the fit. And then I will change the input smoothness to nearest pixel and the viewer smoothness to nearest pixel since we want the pixels we have going on here. And now we will bring in a add and connect it with the null. And then let's plug this one into our switch to change the index to two and now you can see we have this pixelated displacement we can play with so um, once again the um, period defines how big our displacement is and right now it's a little bit too smooth right so let's just leave it on at standard seconds play now. and now we have this pixelated movement going on and if we activate our displacement here again, we get some more irregular kind of slicing in here, uh, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and uh, if you want to change the grid amount really fast, you could do so by typing the amount of grid or checkers or pixels <laughs> in here. So you could go higher. So it's uh, more detailed. No, let's actually let's work with the ramp here right now so we see a little bit better what this changes. And yeah, um, could change this to circular again. So we have a more irregular slicing right now going on using this pixel thing. Um, or we could just have this irregular movement or just the blame thing <laughs> and um, yeah that's it with the adventures in typography for this time I hope you enjoyed this little exercise and hopefully see you on the next flight to our next adventure <laughs> stay kind and bye bye